I just do alignments. I don't talk about them. Welcome back to another video, everyone. Gabby and Spence here from Core 4x4, and today we are going to show you how to do an at-home alignment, something that you can do in your driveway. We have installed all of these new parts, a track bar, drag link, steering, all of it, control arms, the whole nine yards. So we really need to get into some adjustments and give it a quick alignment before we get driving. So if you watch the other videos, you know we've changed almost everything on the suspension on this Jeep. So we're basically starting from zero on the alignment. Now on the rear end, you have the leaf springs, so there's nothing to adjust or do anything with there. So we're basically going to square up the front end and make sure it's tracking true with the rear end. But for now, we're just going to get the tires on, set it on the ground and just see how we're sitting. We're probably off on our track bar. We're probably off on our wheel center. We just need to get a starting point. So we're going to get the wheels on, set it down, see what it looks like. The first thing I'm looking at is the axle being centered left to right under the Jeep. That's your track bar adjustment. We want to get that right before we go super far with any of the other adjustments. A good way to check that is you just want to find a common point to measure from like your frame or your body over to like say your tread that you can measure, that you can repeat left to right. Now every tread is different, so you need to find the same point on your tread. If you have different tread on your tires, this backyard alignment is not going to work. You want to make sure all of your tires are matching, or at least your front ones. So I'm going to go from the body to this corner. On this side, we're about 17 and a half inches, and we're kind of pushed to the driver's side quite a bit, which means we need to adjust our track bar out. But let's check what the passenger side looks like. Yeah, over here, we're 16 and a half inches. Now, when you're aligning left to right, you're going to split the difference. So that's an inch difference. So we need to only make a half inch adjustment in the track bar to make up that inch because you're pulling a half inch that way and going a half inch this way. So we're going to adjust our track bar out a half inch for start. Gabby's going to go jiggle the steering wheel. It's a good way to bolt and unbolt the track bars just uh, to use your steering to shift the body enough. I don't know how to explain it. Watch the WJ video. All right, just jiggle it a little more because you haven't, we haven't bolted anything down. There. Yep. Put a little pressure that direction. There you go. Okay. Let off a little. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Hold on. So I'm spinning this out. Like I said, we need to adjust out because we're pushing the axle to the passenger side and we might be a little off. Cause like I said, the springs are going to settle a little more, but the idea right now is to get it close enough to drive it. Go ahead and put pressure in the same direction. More. Okay. Hold there for a second. We're going to go out a little more. Okay, more pressure, harder, All right, right there. Okay, this way it's important to have a friend. Doing things like this makes it a lot easier. Um, when you're doing any sort of track bar work, having someone turn the steering wheel left and right can really help you line up the bolts. So you're not having to use ratchet straps. You're not having to, to fight the weight of the vehicle. You're using the steering to solve that problem. Just did the adjustment on the track bar. When we first measured, we were at 17 and a half inches to this point in the tread and 16 and a half inches on that side. Adjust the track bar out about a half an inch to help shift it over and we should be pretty close. So we're at just about 17, which is where we should be. So this is all preliminary. And like I said, this is a driveway alignment, but we are pretty much centered. This will settle, this might change. We're gonna check it after we break the springs in, but this will get us driving. We're going to this corner and we're about 17 on both sides. So we just got the axle centered left to right under the Jeep by adjusting our track bar. Now when I'm doing an alignment, I like to start with that and then I move on to checking the wheel base, which is basically we're just checking to see if the, the front axle is square to the back axle. I'll show you how to do that. After that, we're going to get into pinion and caster. Now the biggest problem with lifting your Jeep is you have to adjust your pinion keep your driveline from vibrating and wearing out prematurely. When you do that, you sacrifice caster. There's just no way around it. There's not enough separation between pinion and caster on a factory Dana 30 to really get it exactly where it needs to be. So with this, we are going to adjust our pinion up, which means our, our caster is going to go down. Now factory is six degrees. That's where you 
are shooting for, but you're not going to get back to that. So the trick to setting up pinion and caster on a lifted Jeep is to get as much caster as you can without sacrificing your driveline and having vibrations on the freeway. Now you can tell if you have, if you don't have enough caster, if you get kind of a darty feeling or the Jeep kind of wants to follow the ruts in the road or it's floaty on the freeway, that's all caster. And like I said, it is a dance between pinion and caster. We're gonna go off pinion angle today, get it kind of close, then we're gonna drive it and see how it feels. At four inches, you can find a good, a good medium between pinion and caster, and this Jeep is lifted four inches. But for now, we're gonna square up the front axle with the rear. And the way we do that is we're just gonna check the distance between the tires. It's not the best way. These tires are a little old. You really wanna know center to center, but we're just gonna measure from the back of this tire to the front of that tire and try to duplicate it left to right. And if we're off, we're gonna to have to adjust the arms, but for now, let's check and see where we're at. So this is a 33 inch tire. We're gonna go about 16 and a half inches and just put a mark on the tire so we can keep a consistent measurement just so we know where we're at. And we'll do the same on the back. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. I just wanted a reference point on this one. Now, Gabby, if you'll hold that side, about 67 quarter. Let's see what the other looks like. Okay. Right on. So we just checked our wheelbase and it was all good there. So now we're gonna get under the Jeep and look at the pinion and see what it looks like. Okay, so when we're talking about pinion angle in the Jeep community, we're talking about just that, the angle of your pinion, which is this yoke that comes out of the back of your front differential. Now there's several different ways to measure it. You can go right on top of the diff housing like I did right here. You can also use the flat spots on the front of your axle or even this tab that runs parallel to your pinion. You can measure off of that. Really, when we're adjusting pinion, we're trying to get our pinion to line up with our drive line to eliminate vibrations that you can have at freeway speed. Now, as you add to your pinion angle, you're gonna lose your caster angle. And as we talked about up there, your caster really affects your drivability and whatnot. So the reason we care about the pinion angle is it reduces the wear and tear on your ball joints, on your drive line. If you have vibrations while you're driving or at highway speed, as your pinion angle is off. So that's why we address that here. Now to adjust our pinion angle, you can either do that by, if we wanna rotate our pinion up, you can either turn your lower control arms in or your upper control arms out. Now on this Jeep, we're a little long on the wheelbase, but I like how that sits. So we're gonna leave our lower control arms alone and adjust our upper control arms out. That'll rotate our pinion angle up and at the same time, we are losing caster. But for now, we're just trying to get this driving. We want to see how it feels when we're out on the road and we can make some final adjustments. So we're going to go ahead and make those adjustments. We're going to get this in the air and adjust those upper control arms out. So we're going to make the same adjustments left to right. So we're just going to count our turns. The thread pitch on the Johnny joints are 14 threads per inch. So for every 14 turns, you get an inch. We probably just need to adjust that about a quarter inch. So we're gonna do about three or four turns and then we'll, we'll put it back down and see where we're sitting. Two, three, four. Yeah, we'll do four on each side. Three, and lost count. Four. When I adjust arms on the axle, I like to have a big cheater bar because when you take off both your uppers like we did. Everything rotated forward. So we're just gonna find somewhere we can pry. We're gonna pry right on our new tie rod, tie rod end. And I'm gonna push it up and Gabby's gonna put a bolt in. One more, more, right about there. Uh, a little bit more. You got it. So we adjusted our upper control arms out about a quarter inch, which gave us almost a degree and a half at the pinion here. Now this isn't a perfect pinion angle. Ideally, you do want your pinion yoke right in line with your drive shaft on this front drive line. We're not gonna be able to do that. Cause like I said, we wanna try to get away with as much caster as possible without getting any drive line vibrations. I think this is a happy medium, but we're not gonna know until we drive the Jeep. So right now we're gonna leave it as is, and then we're gonna get to setting the toe and straightening the steering wheel. Now we're gonna to move to the, the toe, which we can set with our tie rod here. Because we did the WJ knuckle swap and we now have the independent tie rod and drag link, we can do this in the air. If you have the Y link set up, you have to do all this on the ground under the weight of the vehicle. This is where you need a friend in the alignment. 
Like I said, there's a lot of different ways to set your toe and to do this. Um, we're just doing a simple driveway alignment, as I call it, where we're gonna pull from similar spots on the tire as close as we can to center on the wheel, on the front and on the back and compare our measurement and see how far off we are. If we're wider on the front, we're towed out. If we're narrower on the front, we're towed in. So I said you need a friend, but obviously, you know, the tire is my friend. On the front here, from outside corner to outside corner, we are 64 and three quarter inches. We're gonna try, try to duplicate this on the back side. Now on the back side, you have all your control arms, your drive line, everything in the way. We're probably gonna sneak right between the upper and lower control arms because we're trying to get a similar, we're trying to duplicate the same measurement on the rear end so we have a good reference point. So I lied, we can go right under the lower control arms and the drive line and we're about centered on the tire here. Ooh, pretty clear, huh? On this one, we're about 66 inches. So we are towed in quite a bit. So we're gonna adjust our tie rod out the front side, we were 64 and three quarter. On the back side, we are 66 inches. So we're actually towed in an inch and a quarter. That's expected because we just threw the tie rod on and we're going to adjust it out quite a bit to try to compensate. So we're just going to start with a small adjustment like that and see where we're sitting. So if the front was 64 and three quarter and the back was 66, we want to meet in the middle. We'll see where we are at. We made one adjustment. We got exactly to our 65 and 3 eighths on this tire and on this tread. Uh, we're gonna check the back side of the tire and see if that tracks. Same point. It's like I've done this before. We got the toe set. Now the last thing we need to do is straighten our steering wheel. We do that with the drag link and we need to do it on the ground. The reason we do it on the ground is because as you set the weight of your Jeep back down, your track bar shifts your axle over as it pivots up. And what that does is pulls on your pivot arm and throws off your steering wheel. So when you set your steering wheel, you do that all on the ground under the weight of the Jeep. So we're going to set it down and see how our steering wheel is sitting and make some adjustments to get it tracking straight. All right, that is it for our very basic driveway alignment. We set the toe, we straightened our steering wheel, we checked our wheelbase, and we messed with the pinion a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or reach out to us directly. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and we hope to see you in the next video of this series.